Hi, I'm uh, Bob Reichert. I'm a retired scientist with the National Research Council. And as a uh, retirement project, I took on the creation of a Wikipedia article on Britannia Village, which had been attempted once before. This is the second attempt, and it's uh, just about finished after a year and a half of work, or slightly more. So tomorrow, I give a talk on the, the use of an, or an alternative to the pushpin maps that are extensively used in Wikipedia. And what a pushpin map is, is a, it's a label and it's a, it's a red little marker that you typically would stick into a bristle board and that shows where, the, um, where Britannia Village is. Now, I've come up with a, um, a new um, map for, to, to substitute the uh, pushpin map. And what that is, is, is based on uh, a photograph that was taken by the National Air Photo Library in 1968. So it brings in a historical aspect. And this map is used in, um, in the neighborhood info box. Every one of us lives in a, in a neighborhood. There's an info box with a, which, with a few highlights of the neighborhood, maybe a couple of photographs that shows who your member of parliament is, that kind of thing. So the photo itself, I bought it from, uh, for $43 from the National Air Photo Library. They gave me a, a license after much negotiation, <laughs> a license, a share like 4.0 license to be able to publish it in Wikipedia. So if you go to the article, it's draft colon Britannia Village comma Ottawa, uh, you will see uh, a number of photographs but the important thing is that those photographs, they, just like the map, they use labels and arrows. The map has probably about 10 features of Britannia Village that is highlighted. Uh, the, the boundaries of the, of the village are highlighted to begin with in yellow uh, lines. The uh, places of interest is, uh, are highlighted as well. And those places of interest are, in fact, talked about in the, in the article. Uh, it's got visual appeal. It's brightly colored because they took photographs. This one's in 1968, but they've stored it at a cold temperature so that um, it, it, it looks lively and it's high definition. It's taken from about 2,500 feet. So, the, uh, just a note on the, the arrows and the labels that are on the photograph, they are permanent markers. Uh, according to Apple support, the, once the photo with the labels and arrows is saved, you cannot delete, remove them, they are permanent. And on that basis, actually, I was able to get two photos out of the City of Ottawa archives that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to get. They gave me permission for the, the labeled uh, photo, not the original one. They want to try to make money on the original one, but the labeled one, I was able to get permission from them to publish it in Wikipedia after about four months of, of negotiation with them. It was tough slugging. So, um, this technology of aerial photographs instead of a pushpin uh, photograph, this technology is available across Canada because the National Air Photo Library since 1920 has been using these, um, ha have been photographing all areas of Canada. So other neighborhoods uh, have the potential to use uh, one of the photographs from the National Air Photo Library uh, for their uh, neighborhood info box. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. I think you covered it, actually. Yeah? Yes. Do you have any questions? I, I know this stuff. Let me see. I don't know if there's a nice way f to, to, to ask um, why it is that copyright needs to be negotiated. <laughs> I think if you're not a Wikipedia and you might wonder why you can't just get the photo from the archives. I'm negotiating with the archive to begin with 
uh, recognizing that the principle of Wikipedia is that these photos are going to be distributed worldwide and can even be used for commercial purposes. Well, th this goes against the, uh, the archives, the principle of the archives. They would like to make some money off of those photographs. So if they, give me, they gave me permission, give me permission, then uh, they're going to be they're going to be losing money on that, on that. It's not a good business, <laughs> you know. And then negotiation with the Wikipedia community, what did they ask well, about? Well, then uh, the, the specific wording of the, uh, of the permission, it's going to be very short, just two sentences, saying that the City of Ottawa Archives, for example, is the owner and copyright holder of that photo. And secondly, that we give you a, a share alike 4.0 international license, uh, which, can, which can be used uh, even for commercial purposes. So that's the, uh, that, that's the difficulty. <laughs> that it's a difficulty that many other Wikipedia editors negotiating yes. with their city and, archives have And faced. I must say that I appreciate the, the high standards of Wikipedia with regard to this intellectual property issue. Uh, I have weathered through it. I don't think that too many people can weather through the, the, the long time. I'm retired, so I've, I've got the time to, to, to fight, fight this. But most people don't have that kind of time, and that's why they prefer the push pin maps, because they did just take seconds to, to load up. I appreciate your patience. You're not the only one who's gone through this. <laughs> okay. I, I have high hopes for the next generation that someday they'll get easier access to photos yeah. of their neighborhoods. And, and more appealing photos. Yes. Thanks <laughs> okay. for contributing to the precedent. Okay. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Bob. Thank you.